Not mad? Not mad? Hey! Well, how can you say that? You're telling me you're not angry? Of course I am. Well, I want to ground whoever did this until they're 30. I want to punish them so hard that they never even think about moving again. And you're standing there talking about not angry? Put the turkey in the basket. Of course they're angry, idiot. But they're not going to tell the truth that they think they're going to get in trouble. We have to shoot them to make them learn a safe, supportive space so that they'll confess and then we ground them. Come on, that's parenting 101. But I want to ground them all now. Now, now, now. Ken, take a walk. But I. Just walk around the block. I'm not helping you. Take your father with you. Fine, come on, Dad. These kids are going to be the death of me. Swear to God, the death of me. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. I'm Fred. I'm Kelly. Good girl, Marlon. <laughs> I'm so sorry about your father. Obviously, he's upset, but I promise you, I'm not. You can talk to me. Um, you just told us that you're actually mad at us, and that when you're saying you're not mad, you're just aware you're going to send and tell them the truth. Remember, you literally said that a few seconds ago. Right, shoot. Okay, so yes, it's true. I'm angry. Because the thing is, we had one nice thing this house. Only one. We used to do many nice things before we had new kids. We had crystal glasses, furniture that smelled nice, rough without stains on them. But then, we had you two, which I don't regret. I love you all the pieces, but when we were babies, well, I said this had to go. Because you were very stupid. And you broke things, and you peed on them. But that's okay. That's what babies do. They pee and they break stuff. With the base, the base was the one thing your father insisted on keeping. He said, you have one nice thing in this house. Just what? We'll tell the kids to be extra careful, and then you'll see that you won't break it. Do you remember the story of how we nursed the base? Yes. So why don't you tell me this story, just so I can make sure you remember it? Do we have to? Yes, you do now tell me the story. <gasps> Dad's grandfather Herbert fought in World War II, which is the greatest war this country's ever faced. And during that war, he was stationed in Japan. He fought bravely and saw many horrible things, but because it was very free, we're free and live in a democracy, so we should be great for every day for people like great grandfather Herbert. Unlike our great little Ted, he was a coward who refused to join the army and instead decided to study modern dance in Canada. But Ted was so uncoordinated that no one would hire him because Ted failed at everything he did. He was a coward and had terrible instincts of what to do in life, like the time he spent his inheritance going to clown college, which turned out to be a pond to see. Wait, why do you know so much about your great uncle Ted? Did your father tell you all this? Yeah, he tells about great uncle Ted all the time. And when he does, he always looks at me. I think he's worried I'm going to become a failed artist or something. You did take that improv class last summer. Yeah, because I didn't march curricular. Well, okay, okay. Great Uncle Ted isn't important. Just get to the part about the base. Fine. Anyway, when great grandpa Herbert finally got back to, from Japan, he brought back a base to remind him of the time he spent there and that even in the most horrific of events, he can still find beauty. He held the base in his lap for several weeks as his ship crossed the Atlantic Ocean, sleeping with it in his arms to make sure no harm came to it. That's right. And ever since you inherited that base from your great grandparents, we cherished it and proudly displayed it. We even took it to an antique roadshow where it was confirmed that the base was worth thousands of dollars. We told you so many times, and still. But it wasn't our fault. It, it. Fred, what are you doing? You're squealing. No, 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 Fred. Ignore your sister. Look at me. Look at me. Ken, one of them cracked. I knew it. I knew they cracked. Which one was it? Fred. Of course it's Fred, with his sausage fingers and his inability to catch a football, just like my great uncle Ted. No, Ken, please shut up. He hasn't confessed, but he's going to tell us what happened to the base. Fred, you coward. Mom and Dad aren't going to understand. Kelly, shut. Fred, look at me. Right here, buddy. You're doing the right thing. Just look at me and tell us about the base. Well, like I said, it's, it's complicated. None of us are to blame yet in some way. We're all to blame. So I'll tell you what happened to the base as I remember it. That's all I can do. All the love and caring you gave your grandfather is so incredible. Fred, you are my favorite grandson. It's my pleasure. You work so hard. Please relax. I'm genuinely excited to play the new Assassin's Creed game you brought over, Marty. Not because of the violence, which gives me pause, but because I feel like we'll get to learn more about the Spanish War whilst we play. Wow, Fred, you're the only person I know who would ever consider the educational value of the means you gain. I really respect your commitment to learning outside of school, as does everyone. Yes, I guess they do. Speaking of education, while well, I'm excited to play the new Assassin's Creed game you brought over, I feel like we should do our biology homework first. That way, 
Video, playing video games will be a reward for our hard work. Or a prince among men, Fred. I totally agree. He's a king, a king, a king, I tell you. Ooh, I do, I do, I do, I do. Hey, ooh, I do, I do, I do, I do. Help me. My ears, my ears, my ears. Oh dear, does your sister realize that we're in the room and that she's singing terribly off key and that her off key singing is interrupting her studying time? Sadly, she does not. She suffers. She suffers from a narcissistic disorder that renders her under of her surroundings and how little talent she has. I politely inform her that we're trying to study. Oh, sister, excuse me, oh, sister. What, what, what do you want? It's just that Barney and I are trying to study. There's been musical audition during a month, Fred, you dumb, fat, head sack of fat. And if I don't practice, I won't get to be Eliza. And I must be Eliza, okay? I'm so talented. But perhaps you can sing more quietly. Leave me alone! I need to go take these hearing aids off. Ooh, I do, I do. Well, I I'll have to study you. while my sister practices okay. her singing. It's okay, Fred. As you explain, your sister has a tragic condition. Having no talent is no laughing matter. It's really not. <laughs> oh, right. That's my best friend, Ava. And don't even think about talking to her because we're going up to my room to practice and only I can talk to her because I'm so controlling. It's okay. Me and Barney are uh, trying to study anyways. Just don't talk to her, okay? Ava, my stupid brother and his stupid friend here. So let's go up to my room so we don't accidentally have their dumbness. Okay, if that's what you want. Although I really wouldn't mind getting to know your brother over coffee or at a movie or any number of dating scenarios possible. Oh, Ava, we all know you're so attracted to my brother and I have deep-seated feelings for him ever since he started doing that Pilates DVD that he stole from my mom and got an amazing shape. But I'll never allow you to do it or share your true feelings, okay? Ever. But my feelings for Fred are so strong. I don't care. I'm cool and controlling, so let's go up to my room and... Oh God, Marlon, you're slobbering all over my clothes and my clothes are the only thing I care about. Go. Oh, Kelly, Marlon doesn't mean anything by slobbering. He simply wants to show you affection. No. Marlon, I said stop barking. I'm trying to practice singing. Go. Hey, there's no need to yell at Marlon. He's just trying to show you he loves you. No, he's not. Marlon. Stop! I told you to stop slobbering! Go! Marlin, no! Not Father's Lady! Wait, wait, wait. Shh! So I tried. I really tried to stop Marlin from breaking the vase, but he was just too scared of Brian after Kelly yelled at him. Brett, that is so not what happened! Is so. There's no way you were doing your homework instead of playing Assassin's Creed, there's no way my voice sounded that off-key, and there's no way Ava would ever say she has feelings for you! Oh yeah, then how come she always says hi whenever she sees me in the hall? Cause that's what people do! Okay, okay, that's enough. Put the shoes in the freezer. <laughs> so tell me, you're saying the feeling that happened in that question and all that? Well, I mean, technically some of what you said actually happened. I mean, I was practicing for the school musical audition, Fred and Marnie were in the living room, then Ava came over, but then Marla ran in, but aside from that, he clearly just made up a bunch of stuff to make himself look less guilty because he definitely had a part to play in the vase breaking. Fine, then tell us what happened. How did the vase break? Well, first of all, I was in the living room practicing my song for like hours before Fred and Marty ever even got there. <laughs> Dude, check it out. Kirby Daddy showed his subscribers this glitch. 
if you jump over this too, too, and knock the nails in the earth, everybody's heads pop off. Yes, their heads came off. I love violence. You guys are the only thing that give me self worth. High five. Less talking, more leaving. Well, check it out! Yes! I love violence! Yeah! I need to go and take these hearing aids on so I can hear you sing some more with my favorite granddaughter. Oh, no. All right, Ava. Ava? Did you say Ava? Yes, right. Ava's coming over to help me with auditions. Don't be weird. You said anything about weird. I'm just going to be doing my Pilates right up here in Ava's line of sight. That's being weird. Yeah, Fred, that is kind of weird. I've never heard of you doing Pilates, ever. Uh, you just haven't seen me do it, that's all. Just answer the door. Ugh, fine. <laughs> Ava, my brother says we're going to have to go practice in my room. I hope that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Hey, but don't mind me. I'm just doing my uh, Pilates. It's essential for the healthy core to activate or your glutes. Yeah. Fred, are you okay? Yeah, fine, uh, Pilates, it's a burn. I'm so sorry, let's just go to my room. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm afraid your brother's gonna hurt himself. Hey, Marley. Hey, girl, good girl, good Marley. Hey, Kelly, can you get the dog out of here? Because I think it's trapping Ava from my Pilates routine. Fred, what are you doing? Um, I'm taking Marlon outside. It's trapping Ava and Barney from my Pilates routine. No, Marlon needs to go outside. Now, go! No, Marlon, don't break Dad's face. He loves it so much. It wasn't me. Not my fault. And so that's what really happened. I tried, I tried so hard to stop Marlon from breaking the face, but I was too late. Too late to stop Marlon from being pushed by Fred. Stupid, simple, overweight Fred. That is such crud. I didn't even do Pilates yesterday. What if I did? I would have done them amazingly. And now I'm gonna do it like she said. Well, there's no way that I say help with like a pinchy towel hack. No way. Okay, okay, that's enough. Opposite ends of the room. Opposite ends of the room. Okay, so despite the fact that you both presented two different versions of the same event, there were a few details you both got correctly. Both of you said that you wanted to use the room space. Both of you said that Barney and I came over. Both of you said that after a push, Marlon knocked over the vase. Is that correct? Yeah, kind of. Basically, yeah. Okay, okay, let's give your dad in the room. Well, maybe it wasn't your fault. <laughs> Dad, Dad, when you were here this afternoon, did you see anything? I know, I know, I know who did it. Who was it? It was collusion. It was at Kanye West. <laughs> That's not what I was going to say at all. It wasn't? No. Why are you so angry lately? It's making you so erratic. It's the diet's fault. Ever since I've been on this stupid caveman diet, it's been making me hangry all the time. Well, all maybe the time. if you had it tripped and broken your arm, you could go to the gym. Say it to my face, Janet. My puffy, fat face. Ken! Can we just get back to the base and talk about this later? We just heard two d different versions of the same event. Two seemingly different versions. But you know what they both had miraculously in common? And in both versions, neither Fred nor Kelly were guilty of breaking the vase. So you think they're lying? They may really be thinking they're telling the truth, but I think there's more to the story because Marlon's not the kind of dog that breaks things. Well, what do we do? If they're both lying or if they're both distorting their own truths, how do we find out what happened? Cheese. <laughs> That's right. Go get yourself a snack. Blue cheese. American. We interviewed the other witnesses. The other witnesses? Oh, Barney Ava. I love it. Let's call Barney first. I think we should call Ava first. Why? Barney's just so weird. Which is kind of strange because he's really arrogant and he's kind of a loser. Being a weirdo and being an arrogant loser doesn't mean he won't tell us the truth. Let's just see what he has to say. Barney, you on the line? Uh, Barney Smith? Is this Barney Smith? 
Heck yeah, on the phone like a drone. <laughs> this is Ken Peterson, Fred's dad. Oh, Mr. Peterson, what's up, old man, Pete? How goes the diet? You still dieting? Fred says you're dieting, but it's not really doing anything but making you angry slash possibly fatter. Well, it's only been a week, so I don't think that's fair at all. Uh, man, being old sucks, huh? I mean, like, all I eat every day is Nutella, five days a week. And guess what? I haven't gained any weight, so it doesn't really matter. No one cares about your weight or my weight, you stupid little. And no one cares that you can eat delicious Nutella all day, but I can't, okay? You hear? Ken, give me the phone! Did you hear what he said to me? Yes, I did, but you shouldn't allow yourself to be baited by a 16-year-old. Give me the phone. Hi, Barney, it's Mrs. Peterson. Janet, hello, hello. I don't know if you know, but I've been really into Nutella these days. Barney, I don't care. We're calling you because we know you were at this, the house this afternoon and wanted to hear from your perspective what happened when the vase broke. You may not know this, but that vase was very important to us. Oh, so as I recall, uh, I came over about like 4.15 and it was a pretty hot day outside, but not so hot that your Nutella would get all melty when you ate it. And just before I arrived, the Peterson sibs were really bored and depressed, and I think it was because I wasn't there. How long have you been playing this game? I don't know. Hours. We should be having fun, but I'm so bored. Are we hungry? Maybe we should eat something. Are we depressed? Where did the fun go? Did somebody say fun? Barney! Barney's here, all right. I felt like you two were being lame, so I, stopped, so I decided to rock a bind and you two out. Great, you sure got our number, B man. You're being pretty lame. Yeah, lame and hungry. Tell me you brought some food. Not only did I bring some food, I brought the food. Nutella bomb! <laughs> Okay, so Barney was a bust. Uh, maybe we'll have to watch the video. 
She's in love with me. Just the group! Just the group the most popular guy in school! He has both the winning personality and the tone physique. Darn it! That's right, everyone. It's me, Justin Green. Star athlete, plus school president, plus perfect teeth, and I do charity twice a year. Twice a year? That's twice more than me. Darn it again. I know, Barney. I know. And while I can certainly relate to your feelings of love toward our fair Ava, I'm afraid there can only be one true suitor. That suitor is... Not you! Party one, Montgomery, starting off with Armada High. That's right, Armada High, a rich boarding school full of really troubled kids and really hot guys. Not only that, but out of a lot of attractive actors, you're objectively the most attractive one. Yes, I am. I've come all the way from Hollywood to declare my love for Ava. How do you even know her? Through the internet, Barty. We met through the internet and fell in love. Ava, you're way beyond your love triangle now. You're in a... You're in a Love Pentagon! <laughs> Pentagon? Don't you mean Hexagon? Is that dog walking? Uh, Marlon, what are you doing here? My love for Ava has turned me into a... a, a Marlon, you've transformed yourself into the most attractive man I've ever seen. No, 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 no! 
Because clearly none of what you just told me happened this afternoon. Yes, it did. Oh, so you're telling me that Fred, Barney, Justin Green, TV star, Paula McGovern, and my dog, who somewhat turned into an attractive man named Marlon, all fell in love with you this afternoon. Yes, it was the world's first love hexagon, and it was amazing. I'm hanging up. There's no such thing as a love hexagon. You're an idiot. I'm hanging up. I'm not sure our friends should have a no, they're terrible. They're ter terrible as a character. I think that story was worse than Barney's. I mean, why did she bring Marlin into it? No, I don't understand any of it. Well, what do we do now? Our kids are probably lying to us, and their friends are possibly insane, but they are not reliable witnesses. How are we supposed to find out the truth when everyone's truth is just so stupid? Yeah. I think, yeah, I think I have a solution. Wait, what are you testing? Okay, I, yeah, I have an idea, but I want you to listen and not just say how disappointed you are in me. Because the idea at first may seem very stupid. Okay, what's your idea? What if we interviewed the dog? <laughs> okay, look. You mean just never knew who broke the face. No, but. And I'm not going to yell at you or call you an idiot or say how disappointed I am because I know how much that face meant to you. It clearly just made your brain break a little. But we'll get through this. My brain isn't broken. I'm serious. I think we should interview the dog. Betty Carlson. You know that sweet old lady who lives down the street? She's a pet therapist, which I know sounds weird, but I saw some videos on YouTube on her website, and she's quite remarkable. Not only does she help the animals, but she really understands them. Cats, parakeets, gerbils, and especially dogs. She's fluent in dog. Ken, I really don't want to invite Betty Carlson over to talk to our dog. I mean, there's a line, isn't there a line to crazy that we're just not willing to cross? Apparently not. Look, I texted her. How she speaks, how she does. Someone's here on the stay. <laughs> <laughs> Betty, thank you so much for coming. When one of us creatures is in stress, I arrive. <laughs> now, show me the distress canine. I need to feel his inner burden. Fine, whatever, Betty. You're here. So let's just get this over with. Marlin! Marlin! <laughs> Yes, yes, my sweetie. Explore your surroundings in nose and tongue. It's your kid. Good. You're getting acquainted. Now, the kids told us that Marlon broke the vase, but I want to hear from Marlon himself what happened. I'll do what I can. Marlon? Marlon? I need you to hear me. I need you to smell me. You've been accused of a terrible, terrible crime, and I need you to tell me exactly what happened to the vase. Can you do that? Oh, very good, Marlon. Now go as slowly as you like. He says he remembers everything. Everything. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> blah, 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 Marlon. Blah, 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 food. Blah, 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 food. Blah, 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 me. Blah, 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 me. Blah, 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 me, me, me. Blah, 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 me, me, me. Me, me, me. Me, me, me. Me, me, me. Me. No, no. Blah, 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 you. Blah, 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 you. Blah, 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 you, you, you. Blah, 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 you, you, you. Blah, blah, blah. Wait. Blah, 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 blah. Marlin. Marlin? Bad Marlin, bad Marlin, base Marlin. Base Marlin, bad Marlin. Bad Marlin, bad Marlin, bad Marlin. Food Marlin, bad Marlin, bad, bad, bad. And they kept screaming, bad boy, bad boy, but I'm not a bad boy, am I? No, no, you're not, Marlon. Betty, thank you so much. This has been very illuminating. And everyone's happiness is his own reward. And also, you can pay me. This is my job. Of course. Let me see if I can find a check. Oh, Ken, do you have cash? 
We can settle up later. I'm afraid I have to go. I am very late for a cat who suffered from a severe case of PTSD. She was terribly teased by former owner owners for having messy cat face. It's not her fault. It's their curse. Their burden. They don't actually hate us. And you pay me because I make a living out of this. Well, thank you again. You really saved us. Then we have to. So they both did it. Together they broke the vase and then blamed Marlin to cover up their tracks. God, we raised some terrible kids. Yeah, seems we did. That's so disappointing. I gave up a very promising law career to raise them. And I put on so much weight. You really haven't. Well, it feels like I have. Well, we should go grab them. Right. Fred, <laughs> Kelly, my office, now. Thank you, Marlin, for telling the truth. She trusts me, she says, but should she? She doesn't even know I can talk. And walk. And? I can break the fourth wall. I know it's a lot, which is why I don't tell them. I mean, if they knew adults were really capable of, and the things that we could really do, some treats are just too big for people to wrap around and run, you know? Anyways, I'm rambling. You don't really care about this. Dogs have secret abilities and can walk and talk stuff. You want to know, once and for all, who broke the vase? Thank <laughs> you. 